in this tutorial, I will teach you how to create a real-time chat app using Socket.io and we will be building the front end using SvelteKit. Remember to like and subscribe. Before we do anything, open up your VS Code Editor and create a folder called Server. Open the terminal and CD into that server. Once you have opened the server in your terminal, run npm init-y. For this project, we will only be using Express, Socket.io, and UUID as the packages for the server. In the server folder, create a file called Socket.js. This file will take charge of everything that has to do with real-time connections and anything to do with the data. Now import the UUID package and destructure the Socket.io package so you'd only get the server. Create a function called CreateMessage. This function will take care of validating all the contents that the user has sent to the server and creating a message with it. Now create a function called create socket. We will be storing the messages in an array. Create a new instance of the server from socket.io. Create the connection event from socket.io. This method will take charge of everything that has to do with sending the message, receiving the event, and sending the message to newly created users. Export the create socket function by using the module.exports is equal to create socket. Now create a file called index.js. Import express and import http and import the newly created socket file. Add an express app, add the express app to the http server, add one endpoint and create the socket and listen on the http server and just call the function. In the package.json, add a new script called dev and that'll take care of running the server. Just input node dot. Now if we run the dev command and open http localhost 3000, we can see we have hello world. Now create a new folder called client. This folder will take in the Svelte server and take care of everything that has to do with the UI. Open the folder in the terminal and run npm init svelte. Once you have created the project, install all the dependencies. Once all the dependencies are done installing, install socket IO client and UUID. In the source folder, create a models folder, and in that folder, create a message.ts file. This file will contain the message interface and also the function to validate it. Create an interface called message and export it. Now create a function called validate message and export it too. As you can see, we're using type of to check the type of every single property to make sure it's type safe. In the source folder, create a state folder and create a messages.ts file under that state folder. This file contains the store to enable real time capabilities. Under the source folder, create a socket folder and an index.ts file under it. This file will take care of connecting to the socket server and retrieving all the data from it. Initialize the socket by using the IO method in the socket.io client package. Create a new event called messages and validate the messages parameter to check if it's an array. We'll only receive 25 messages per page and we'll validate each message individually. Now create two interfaces, one called send success and the other one called send error. Create a new function called send message. I would rather return a promise than create a new asynchronous function for this use case. Now type check everything. Once all errors have been caught and every single property has been validated, call resolve.
create a new folder called services and in that folder create an id.ts file. This will take care of creating the ID for the user and storing it. Check that we're not in the browser and check if there's not an already cached ID. If there isn't a cached ID, create a new ID and store it. Because this project is using TypeScript and UUID doesn't use TypeScript by default, we have to add the at types UUID package to make sure that everything is type safe. Add the at type slash UUID package as a dev dependency. In the route folder, add a plus layout.svel. All this file is doing is taking off the margin and the padding from the body and the HTML. After that's created, create a plus layout.ts file. This file will take charge of everything that has to do with importing the socket package and initializing everything for the project. Export SSR as false because I saw that there was problems with the socket.io client and the server render for SvelteKit. Now open the plus page.svelte file, import the id store, Input the send message function and make sure that the script is using TypeScript. Add a messages input variable to store the input from the user and add a handle submit method that takes care of sending the message to the server. This list ref will be used to scroll down to the bottom every time a user has sent the message. We will add a reactive statement and we will add an if list ref and we will scroll to the top. Now add a header and add a body. In the each method, add the reverse statement to the messages store to make sure that all the messages are in the right order. The message wrapper will be using Flexbox to position the message. Because of this, we will conditionally render some divs either front or back to see whether it will go on the right side or the left side of the page. Now create a form class input container. Make sure to add the prevent default flag to the handle submit. Because there's too much styles, we will just go to the GitHub, click on client, go to source folder, go to the routes folder, go to the page.svelte file, and scroll down and just copy and paste the styles. After that's done, just paste it into your editor. After that's done, run the client server without closing the node server. As you can see, we go to localhost 5173 and we have this empty page that says full socket.io tutorial on the top. If we send a message, you can see that it pops up. Send some more messages and open a new tab with the same location as the server. So basically, you're going to open two tabs. If we send a message on the new page, we can see that we both have the same address in the cookie and we are both synced into the same server at the same time. To test with different users, go to the inspect page, storage, and erase the cookie named ID. Now restart the page, and as you can see, we're given a new ID and we are no longer the person who sent the first messages. I hope this video provided you value. Comment if you have any questions or concerns, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.